Hello there, friends. I want to just do a short little time with you to talk about how it is that we pray together. Uh, you and I, in our tradition of the Episcopal Church, uh, we uh, have this book, which you may not have ever seen because we print our worship services on paper. But this book is called the Book of Common Prayer. And do you know that in this book, uh, this is a book that uh, has prayers in it. It has our common worship things that we do together in it. It has uh, resources that help us know what scripture readings we're reading and when we're reading them because they are in a sequence uh, so that the story of Jesus and God's salvation gets told um, in its cycles and entirety. Um, and um, there is just a wealth of uh, opportunity for us to, to pray together. And why do we pray? We pray because we believe that God has made us and gifted us, uh, that God is our companion through thick and thin, uh, and that we are created to draw near to God, and God desires to draw near to us. So, we in the Episcopal Church have been praying prayers like are found in this book uh, for a very long time, uh, all the way back really to the beginnings of the disciples, Jesus, and then in our case, um, with the Church of England. Uh, we have been saying our prayers in that tradition as Anglicans, and Anglican means that we come from a tradition of prayers that have been said uh, in England and beyond. So this Book of Common Prayer uh, has many things that shape the way in which we believe and that we pray. Here is a bonus question for those of you in the confirmation class. If you can remember this, lex arande, lex credende, lex arande, lex credende. We pray what we believe. It shapes, the way that we pray shapes what and how we believe. Lex arande, lex credende. The prayers, the worship in this book are lex arande, lex credende. That's what we believe as Anglicans. How we pray is how we believe. Um, this Book of Common Prayer comes from a long lineage, if you want to think about it as birthdays. The first Book of Common Prayer uh, was established by Archbishop Thomas Cranmer in 1549. And he did so, he started to create a Book of Common Prayers, going all the way back to prayers from the time of Jesus and all the way up until 1549. He wanted to pull together uh, a Book of common prayer because lots of people had different ideas about how they wanted to worship in England at that time. When he pulled together in 1549 the first Book of Common Prayer. Like all things, they didn't quite get it right, so in 1552 he came out with another one. And then in 1558 there was this thing called the Elizabethan Settlement, and that meant that people who really believed that we should be praying this way um, with more ritual and symbols uh, and people who really believe that we should be praying this way with more experience of God and the Spirit. Um, uh, the Elizabethan Queen Elizabeth said, let's pull these two things really together um, and let's find a middle way. Let's incorporate a little bit of all of that. And in 1558, that is what was created. And then finally, they tweaked it a little bit in 1662 in England. They came up with the Book of Common Prayer. And in England, that still is the Book of Common Prayer that they use today. Now, they've written some variations and there's some modern interpretations. But in England, it's still 1662, the Book of Common Prayer. In America, in 1789, because of the Revolutionary War, then the Anglicans praying here on this soil here in the colonies, 
uh, were no longer part of England because of the revolution and independence. And we created our own church called the Episcopal Church. And in 1789, we created our first own Book of Common Prayer with lots of prayers in it from all of the things from England. Uh, and then in 1892, we came out with another prayer book because 100 years had gone by and we needed new uh, language and really some new different opportunities to pray. Then in 1928, another prayer book was made. When I was a child, when I was a child, this is how old I am, we prayed with the 1928 prayer book. And then in 1979, we came up with this, the Book of Common Prayer 1979. Now, there's lots of variations and lots of other supplements that we use that have been written since, but since 1979, this is the Book of Common Prayer. In this book, you will find prayers for the morning. You'll pray, find prayers for evening prayer. You'll find all the prayers that we say corporately for Ash Wednesday, for Palm Sunday, for Monday, Thursday, during Holy Week, for Good Friday, uh, for Easter, for our weekly Eucharist together, uh, for Saints' Days. Um, you'll find the sacraments in here. We'll talk about that in a separate video. You'll find Psalms in here. Uh, you'll find interesting in the back of the book is interesting historical documents. You can go and read those someday. Uh, all there's prayers in here for, uh, individuals and families to say together. There's prayers for the evening, a beautiful service called Compline, if you know what that is. You will find those prayers in the Book of Common Prayer. Lex Arande, Lex Credende. Um, for our purposes, knowing that our prayers come from the Book of Common Prayer, um, there is a certain uh, way and definition of prayer. Why do we pray? We pray, we pray to get close to God and for God to be close to us. For confirmation class, did you know that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different types of prayer in our uh, experience as Episcopalians? This is the kind of question I'm going to ask you, so pay attention. There is adoration, and that is just to be in God's presence. We adore God. It is like just sitting down with someone who you really admire and love just sit there to be with them and your heart just ekes out adoration adoration praise we just can't help it sometimes we just have to shout sometimes we just have to lift up our hearts and sing a song it's that way with god sometimes we just have to in god's awesome presence just offer praise shout thanksgiving the third type of prayer thanksgiving is we're just grateful for the blessings that are in our lives. Just grateful. I am grateful for my children. I love my children. They are a blessing in my life. And I just say to God, thank you. Uh, penitence. Penitence are our sorry prayers. Those are the prayers when we realize that we haven't quite measured up, where we might have done something a little off chart or off skew where we may have disappointed others or ourselves or even God. We say our prayers of penitence. I'm sorry. Oblation. There's a fancy word for you. Oblation is the offering of ourselves, our whole life, our life's work. Every good deed that we're trying to do in this world to make things better is oblation. Here we are, God, take us all. Uh, intercession and petition are the last two types of prayer. Intercession and petition are both types of prayers where we are asking uh, God to intercede on behalf of others uh, and to hear our petitions for that. So, God, please be with my grandmother who is having surgery and guard her and watch over her. So the types of prayer, adoration, praise, thanksgiving, penitence, oblation, intercession and petition. Maybe you can think uh, about uh, your own life and the prayers which you wish to offer. That may be prayers of adoration or prayers of intercession or prayers of thanksgiving. Why don't you just think about a prayer of thanksgiving for now? So friends, the Book of Common Prayer, Lex Arande, Lex Credende, 
uh, the prayers that we say corporately in this book. What a great resource we have that helps shape who we are and how we believe in our prayers. That's the Book of Common Prayer, my friends. Blessings.